Hey, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com, and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show. And in this episode, I'm going to be answering another one of your questions, and this one I actually received over on Facebook as a private message. And the question, succinctly put, is what WordPress theme should I use? So in this episode, I'm going to be tackling that question. This episode is sponsored by the Complete Web Developers Course taught by Rob Percival on Udemy.com. Now what I love about this course is first how comprehensive it is. It's 235 lectures on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, Bootstrap, WordPress, PHP, MySQL, APIs, and mobile apps. I mean, it's ridiculous. Second, I love how good of a teacher Rob is. As a former school teacher, Rob knows how to explain complex concepts in ways anyone can understand. And of course, the cool thing is I talked Rob into giving my audience an 85% discount on the course. So check the description of this video for a special link that contains a coupon code good for 85% off of the Complete Web Developers course by Rob Percival. Click that link and you'll be all set for the discount. Now, on to the episode. All right, so what WordPress theme should you use? And I want to lay out the question a little more completely so that we have the full context here. So it says, hi, John, I wanted to ask you this question in Quora, but it seems too long for them. I hope you don't mind. I want to work as a freelance web designer based on WordPress, but I can't decide which framework to use. I know I should focus my efforts in learning really well one of them at first. Everyone recommends Genesis and I feel comfortable using it, but I really don't like their themes. They look outdated. I've also tried other options like Divi, X-Theme, and many, many multi-purpose themes from Thief, Theme Forest. Although they look great, all the custom code they use make me, makes me feel insecure about the future if I want to change themes or fix something. This issue has been on my mind for months and I still can't figure it out. Please throw me some light in here. All right, well, I will attempt to, to do that. So first off, I think it's important that we cover the options that are out there. Now, uh, the question mentions a few of them, but I want to go through them and try to give you a little bit more detail and insight on some of the options that are available. So the first option is to use one of the popular frameworks that are out there. Now, there's a number of them. Genesis was mentioned. There's also Canvas, Headway, Thesis, Builder, Elegant Themes, Page Lines, and probably a number of others that I haven't mentioned. Now, I have used both Genesis, Genesis and Canvas extensively. In fact, the company that I work at, Wishless Products, we used Canvas as our base for a long time for our websites. We've since moved on to something else, but uh, Canvas was one that we used for a while. We also at one point used Genesis for one of our sites. I used to use Genesis for my own website, johnmorrisonline.com, and I've used it for projects and so forth. So I'm very familiar with those two. I also have the sub subscription over at Elegant Themes. I've worked with Page Lines on a couple sites. I've messed with their theme and almost used it for one of my sites, but ended up going a different route. So, and I've used Thesis on uh, some client websites as well. The only one I, the only two I haven't used in this list are Headway and Builder. So I do have some experience with all of these. And the thing that you really have to take a look at is they're all designed for something a little bit different. So for example, my perspective of Genesis is that Genesis is really meant more, the actual framework itself is meant more for developers. So it's built in a way where it's not too heavy, where you as a developer when you're building a child theme have to go in and override a bunch of stuff or undo a bunch of stuff, which is one of the things that can be really annoying when working with a framework is when you have to undo a lot of the stuff that's in there already to get to where you can actually build something on top of it. Genesis is pretty good in that respect that it's pretty, the framework is pretty bare bones where you can build almost right on top of it without having to undo a lot of stuff. Canvas is probably a little further down the continuum in that there's, there's a little more that it does right out of the box. 
because it's meant to be it's meant so that it can be used right out of the box and not always necessarily in conjunction with a child theme so there's a little more that you have to undo if you want to work just straight off of a bare bones type setup and i would say elegant themes and page lines go much further down and even thesis go much further down that continuum where there's a lot of things that you're going to that are custom that you're going to have to deal with and work around if you're going to use those as frameworks so it depends what you want it depends if you want something bare bones that you can build on top of or if you want something that's a little further down the line where you don't have to do as much and you're willing to work with some of the things that they already have in place and just figure out how to use them or work around them and so forth so again each one of them has a little different approach and you're just going to have to take a look at, at each one and see what's a good fit for you the second option then is i put this in the category theme for theme forest themes but you could really call this kind of standalone not necessarily based on framework marketplace type themes so salient divi x themes those are some of the ones that come to mind and these are really meant to be complete themes there i wouldn't really call these frameworks in in that sense where they're meant to have a lot done on top of them from my experience with these themes they're really more complete they allow you to tweak things within them but they're not really meant for developers to develop on top of them like a pure framework is so this is for you if you know you really don't if if you're a non-coder and you really don't want to get into doing any of the coding or you're a developer and you don't really want to spend a bunch bunch of time writing your own custom themes on top of a framework you'd rather just use an existing theme and tweak it for you know tweak it for for what it is that you're doing so these are more in line with that and the thing that i would say about just marketplace themes in general is just to to just be careful because you really want to look at the history of the developer how many other projects they have how reliable they've been how well they handle support how long they've been doing it and so forth because the last thing that you want is to base your web design business around a theme that in a year or six months or whatever is going to be gone or when you need some kind of support you can't get it and, and you're you're stuck kind of holding the bag with it especially if you're going the route with of a complete theme where you're not doing a lot on top of it the support that you get the longevity of that company or that developer is going to be important because you're really kind of putting all of your your eggs in a basket with the, that particular theme the final option then is to roll your own and this is the option that i have moved to and the again wish this product the company i work uh, at we have moved to as well so my website now runs my own framework that i've created with a child theme on top of it all of our websites at the company well not all but we've slowly transitioned most of them we have a few left we need to transition but they've been moved to the framework and then child themes for each one of the individual sites so this is the route that i'm going now and frankly it just came down to having worked with so many different themes and having gained enough experience where i felt like i could roll my own and then being able to deal with some of the things that i didn't necessarily like about the other ones and being able to build a framework in exactly the way that I wanted to build it so that I could easily build child themes and, and so forth on top of it. So probably down the line, if you're a developer, that's the route you're going to get to. But if you're not comfortable or not completely familiar with how to build WordPress themes, then you may want to work with some of the other ones to get an idea of how they're put together, get into the code and so forth. I learned a lot. You know, I have to give Brian Gardner a ton of credit and you know obviously he's a great guy he deserves all of it but i learned a lot from the genesis theme and so a lot of what i did in my own framework was based on concepts that i learned from looking through the code on genesis and that's what's going to happen when you start working with these other themes you're going to find an approach that you like and then you can roll that into your own so you're not necessarily starting from scratch concept wise and then you can change it in the way that you would like the other one to be changed when you're working with it. 
So those are the options that are available. And again, how to decide which one you should do. So if you want to make your own child themes, this is one of the part of the questions that kind of stuck out to me is that you like Genesis, but you didn't like the child themes. This really makes me think that you're not wanting to write your own themes, your own custom themes. You're wanting to take a theme and install it and customize it a little bit for people. So that the, the, the first option of popular frameworks and using something like Genesis may not be the best route for you to go unless you can go into one of these different theme companies and find a child theme that you like that you can use as your base and tweak or you can find an array of child themes that you like that you can, can tweak. So if you're willing to go that route, then you could probably use the popular frameworks. But the popular frameworks are really meant more for people who want to get into cut, uh, writing their own custom themes and creating your own child themes for them. But you also don't want to get yet get into writing your own framework. So again, if you if you want to write your own custom themes, your own child themes on top of an existing framework and don't want to build your own framework yet, then going the route of a, a, a theme like theme framework like Genesis, Canvas, Headway, Thesis, etc. would probably be the route to go. If you're a non-developer or a developer who doesn't want to get into theme creation, then I would go with either, as I mentioned, a framework child theme combo. So if you can find a combo in one of the popular frameworks that you like, you can go that route or going the full established marketplace theme type setup. So the Divi theme, the X theme, Salient and so forth. And really getting in there and learning how those themes work, learning how the, the code works and figuring out how to work with those so you can add value when you're installing it for someone or using it on a site that you're building for somebody. So again, that's for the non-developer, the person who really doesn't want to get too heavy into theme creation. You, you just want to tweak on top of and be able to edit and manipulate a little bit, but you want what's existing there to do most of the work for you. Finally, then, if you're a hardcore developer who really wants to get into heavy theme development, then I, I recommend building your own theme. Now, that may be after a few years of working with other themes, as I mentioned, but you know, if you really want to get heavy into theme development, start creating your own themes and selling those, or at the very least, having a framework that you built as the uh, foundation of all the sites that you build for clients, so you're extremely familiar with it, and you can update it and, and so forth appropriately, then I would get, in, get into building your own framework. If you're going to get into building your own framework, then the route that I would suggest to do that would be to download some of these other frameworks that are out there. There's paid ones, there's free ones, and so forth. Mess with them, use them, go through them, get to know the code, and find what you like from each one. And as you do, you'll start to build a perspective and a vision on what you think you can do that, that A, works for you, and also B, brings a different kind of value and perspective to the marketplace for what you're doing. Now, if you have a question for me, you can ask your question over on Quora.com and invite me to it. Just go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Quora. That'll take you to my profile and you can invite me to answer your question over there. You can also tweet me at JP Morris and ask me your question on Twitter or as with this question over on facebook.com slash John Morris online, you can send me a message over there and I'll try to get all of those questions on the show. If you like this episode, be sure to like it so I know that this is the kind of content you're after. And if you haven't yet, subscribe so that you get access to all of the latest episodes and tutorials that I upload here as well. Finally, if you haven't, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com and download my free seven strategies to turn your code into cash cheat sheet. All right, everybody, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next time.